anything that happens to you is part of the eternal battle between good and evil. Well, my view was different from everyone that I went to church with. I didn't share much of my opinions, again, because you learn to just keep them to yourself, but when I would share, most people wouldn't agree with me, and they would think that there was a clear difference, but I never saw it. I thought that we were extremely similar to Mennonites, and the Amish, and Mormon, and Jehovah's Witness. I thought we were super similar, the most similar to Amish, because with Pentecostal, again, like, the attire, the long, for the women, like, long skirts, your hair's long, you never cut it, you never style it, you don't color it, you don't wear makeup, you are always with only Pentecostal, so you're always in a group of people with skirts, and they're baggy skirts, and they're ugly, and you dress ugly, and you all dress ugly, and you all go around together with your Bible at hand, ready to preach. And the people in my group would speak in tongues and dance in the spirit, which is weird. And no one else even does that. So I thought we were like one step up, which is why I thought we were more like Amish. Because Mennonites and Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons, yeah, they talk to you. Yeah, they try to spread the word. But they don't go around speaking in a made up language. Like, that sounds made up. They don't go doing that. They don't go throwing themselves all around and knocking tables down and chairs down and drum sets down and the mic stand and knocking their glasses off. Pentecostals, you have to be loud, you have to praise, so you don't just read the Bible, you're saying praise words the whole time, and you're praising the whole time, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, amen, every two seconds, and the goal is to speak in tongues, and the goal is to dance in the spirit, and speak in tongues, dance in the spirit means you're knocking stuff down, means you're laying on the floor, means somebody's blowing in your face, means somebody's trying to push you down. All the ones that are around communities don't do that, except for Pentecostals. So why would I think that we were less than or less of a cult than those? Because people refer to those as a cult. So why would, why on earth would I think that Pentecostal was not, first of all? And second of all, less, less, re less, re less re religious and less serious than those. Why would I think that? No, actually, I always thought it was one step up and I thought it was Amish level. So my plea as a young Pentecostal girl was that my family would please just remove us from society and place us far away and isolated the way we were we already doing, but like the Amish. Why not do that? Well, because Pentecostal, that's the goal. The goal is to look like an Amish, but worse and more annoying, and then be with everybody else. So your beliefs are cuckoo crazy, very strict, for no reason, about a being that doesn't exist, right? You believe that the being is gonna take over your body and you're gonna speak a angelic language. Angels are being dispatched right now. Hamanta Aka Ata Raka Deda Baka Sanda Ata Ambo Osa Kata Rite Eke Banda Ata Riki Didi Asha Da.
it takes over your whole body and you knock things down and if you wear glasses they're off your face and if you're doing something that's on the ground and thrown everywhere and then you wake up out of your coma of the Holy Spirit on the floor with a blanket on you. society right next to the supermarket that you go to right across the street from the car place with all the cars in the lot right next to your neighbor and right down the street from your kids school there's people doing these things <laughs> not acknowledge that if somebody happened to do that in the school which has happened twice to me and no they did not go to my congregation two students in school spoke in tongues and they weren't in my congregation at all they weren't even Pentecostal but that's something else even when that happened and even when people would talk about that horror movie that they saw with demented people and exorcisms not uttering a word and pretending like it's not related at all because even if yeah you saw my family do this in that parking lot that one time we were preaching there it's not the same thing because what there what my family's doing is of god and the exorcism movie that you saw is not of god and what that girl was doing in class that's not Pentecostal like me is not of God, which is ridiculous because it's literally all the same thing. You're claiming the same thing. You're claiming that a demon is being exercised from you or a holy demon, the Holy Spirit, the holy demon is, is either way you're saying that something <laughs> is in your body. <laughs> Battle, eternal battle between good and evil. No joke. The Pentecostal religion is one of the few Christian religions where they truly believe word for word what the Bible says. Yes, of course, like every other church, they will cherry pick and they will go through the scripture and be like, no, this one's real and this one's not and this one was to be taken like a parable and the, but no. They believe it. They believe that at least it happened at some point. But the eternal battle, that is life. That is blessings and your trials, right? Blessings are all the good things that happen to you, and the trials and the tribulations are all the bad things that happen to you. But it's more than that, because while many people believe that, because a lot of people do, a lot of people think that trials are bad things and blessings are good and whenever something good happens to them, like a paycheck comes in on time, they're blessed. But they don't know that there are religions that take it seriously, where when they say that, they legit mean that an angel is there helping them. Like an angel guided their paycheck into their bank account on time or a demon made your punctured your tire and made your tire flat that day. They literally, there's no difference between your flat tire bad day and you go to turn on the light in your bathroom and the light bulb goes out. There's no difference. They're both demons. Anything that is bad and negative is a demon. If you are talking about a demon experience, demon experience that you had, and then the door closes, that's a demon. Oh yes, and if you're talking about the angel experience, the angel experience that you had, and then the door closes, that's still a demon because the demon's gonna be angry that you were talking about the angels. So it's it's everyone's game and it really isn't fun. It's not fun to be raised like that, to be raised where every single thing that you talk about, no matter if it's good or bad, no matter if it's you or God, it'll always go back to that. 
somehow your day at school turns into angels and demons your encounter at the drugstore turns into angels and demons you turning in an essay turns into angels and demons and so on and so forth it's exhausting and really ridiculous and it doesn't help you learn any lessons in life it doesn't help you grow 